Mark it on your calendars. Remco Evenepoel is back nearly two months to the day after his horrible crash in the Tour of the Basque Country, which resulted in a broken collarbone and shoulder blade. He's back and he's back on top, winning the time trial after 34.4 kilometers here in the Criterium du Dauphiné 2024 in the village of Nulis. Remco Evenepoel blistering to the finish in a time averaging nearly 50 kilometers an hour, knocking off early pace setter Josh Tarling by 17 seconds over those 34.4 kilometers an hour. The world champion out there racing in his rainbow stripes. Well, he wasn't in them for long because afterwards, the stage win today earned him also the Mayo Jean, the yellow jersey of the Criterium du Dauphiné after four days of racing midway into this race and we're nearly there to the finish four more days to go and i'll get into those days here in a minute but first let's talk about the significance of this day for remco and all the riders out there participating i want to speak about the americans mateo jorgensen nilson palace and derek g the canadian who started the day in the yellow jersey and pulled off a great ride this time trial has significance in just one second it's Remco Evenepoel's 55th win, and a Belgian man there from the west coast of Belgium, uh, Wim is his name, gave me a couple casquettes to remind me it was his 55th win. He's been riding only a short amount of time, but has collected many victories along the way. Liege Baston Liege a couple times, road world champion, also the time trial world champion, which he's racing in today, the Rainbow Stripes, Vuelta champion, but that crash in the Tour of the Basque Country truly set him back. But today, he showed he's back. His injuries aren't a problem, and he's en route to the 2024 Tour de France, starting in just under a month in Florence, Italy. And this TT is an important day for him and also those other GC hitters like Jorgensen, like Primoz Roglic, and we'll get to his time, third on the day, because in the 2024 Tour de France, there are two time trials, a 25 kilometer time trial about midway in, not that long. And then the final time trial on the final day, not since 1989 when Greg LeMond upset Laurent Fignon, the Frenchman, have we had a time trial that ended the Tour de France when the American pulled on the yellow jersey on the final day in Paris. This year, the Tour de France finishes in Nice, but never mind that, it is a time trial and it's 34 kilometers, the same distance as what the riders face today. And Ramco Evenepoel showed race ready. The time trial, mostly flat, slightly uphill, heading here to the town of Nulis. And this town, looking back over the history, back in the 1700s, there was a tooth that was collected and anyone who touched that tooth it would cure your rage. So if you're raging, you'd go touch that tooth. They still have the tooth over here in the museum. So some of the riders who didn't have a great day out there on the bike, who might be raging after the day, might wanna go find that tooth, touch it, and reset things for the final four days in this Criterium du Dauphiné. That won't be the case, however, for Josh Tarling, the 20-year-old British rider from Team Ineos Grenadiers. He blasted through the time trial best time at 10k best time at 24.9k and best time at the finish 34.4 kilometers you'll remember his name he was third in the world's last year behind remco evenepoel and behind filippo ghana at just 20 years old he's out there racing today and it looked like he might pull it off but remco wasn't going to let him do that still he put in a great time out there on the day just 17 seconds shy of Remco Evenepoel with his time of 41 minutes and 49 seconds. Josh Tarling was 17 seconds off that time. Now, as the day progressed, we started to keep an eye out on the GC riders. Nielsen Paulus, after having some knee issues earlier this year, he's back and he's running strong, setting some good time checks out there on the day. And it's a good sign as Nielsen heads towards the Tour de France. Juan Ayuso, winner of the Tour of the Basque Country overall and TT winner in Triano Adriatico. Well, he would come in at ninth on the day when we're looking at the stage results. Nielsen Paulus finished there in seventh at one minute and 24 back behind Remco Evenepoel. Juan Ayuso, one minute and 27 seconds back on the Belgian world champion. Then we look at the time of Matteo Jorgensen. Wow, the American is truly showing strong. 
He's the new signee for the team, coming over from Movistar after four years, I think it was, joining Visma Lisa Bike, the super team. It's like the New York Yankees in cycling. Now he's with Visma Lisa Bike, and out there, he stormed the course. It wasn't enough, and I don't think he could have kept the white jersey anyways, because he's going up against Remco Evenepoel. Heck, maybe he could have kept it. Remember, he beat Remco in Paris-Nice earlier this spring. Matteo Jorgensen didn't ride well enough to keep the white jersey, but rode a great time out there. And when I saw him, he crossed the line. He was super out of breath in that Darth Vader looking yellow helmet, but super proud of his ride out there today and well placed at the end of the day when we look at the GC results. Then our attention shifts over to Primoz Roglic and you'll see him later tomorrow in the green jersey, not the green jersey of Bor Hansgrohe, but the green jersey of points. He got enough points out there today somehow. You have to look at the calculus, the trigonometry to figure out that, but he's in the points jersey now. He finished third on the day and he was improving, riding steadily throughout the time checks during the day. Wasn't as good as a Remco Evan a pull and a couple points on the course, we were afraid that he might crash, but that wasn't the case. We rode over there, we followed him to the team van. Now the teams have their bus at the start. A lot of teams have their bus at the start and these little small vans here at the finish where the riders can recover, get on their rollers, warm down. As Primos was warming down, we were able to have a word with him and he looks better after yesterday because you remember he crashed in yesterday's stage. The cameras didn't catch it. We spoke with him after the stage. Here he said he, he was just happy he didn't crash today and he was laughing about it. And clearly you could tell he was in a good mood after his crash two months ago as well. He was in that super crash with Remco Evenepoel, also with Jonas Vingago, who hasn't yet returned from racing. He came away, Primus Roglic came away without any fractures or anything, but he still was out for two months and just returned to racing a few days ago here in the Criterium du Dauphiné. He was pleased with the day. Yeah, he was 30 some seconds back on Remco Evenepoel at the end of the day, but he put in a good TT ride and frankly, when we're looking at the past days, he looks more dynamic, more explosive than Remco Evenepoel in these finishes, and that'll suit him in these upcoming days, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. First, let's look at those time splits, because Evenepoel was ahead of Tarlene at the first time check, right behind Tarlene at the second time check, then on the third time check when it mattered at the finish line, he was on top of him. Roglic was improving throughout the day, wasn't in the top five at the first time check, at the second time check, third at the third at the second time check, and at the final time check on the finish line, third for the day, right there at 39 seconds back behind Remco Evenepoel, Matteo Jorgensen, one minute and seven seconds back. As I mentioned, he did a great ride, and it was probably a surprise ride by Olier Lascano, who had his breakout a few years ago in the classics, the Spanish rider from Team Movistar, and Derek G. As I mentioned him, he's riding off today in the yellow jersey, Israel Premier Tech, the Canadian. It was his first time trial of the 2024 season, one minute and 24 seconds back. And his fiance Ruby was there to greet him after he finished. I was talking with Primus Roglic when he finished and I didn't get footage of him across the finish line, but I saw him right over there at the Israel Premier Tech bus afterwards, made a beeline right to Derek G, who's fighting for the GC. And I think he's gonna do quite well. And Daryl Impey, one of the DS's former riders explained they want to test him here, see what he can do before he goes on to the Tour de France. And Derek was just excited. I mean, he lost the jersey today, but it didn't quite matter. When I caught up with him on the rollers there, you couldn't see the jersey. He looked topless, and he was because it was unzipped. He still had the yellow shorts on, and the top of the jersey was down uh, around his bottom as he was on his rollers there warming down. Derek was just pleased with the day. Sixth on the day, six behind riders like Remco Evenepoel, Matteo Jorgensen, and of course, Primoz Roglic, established riders and a great ride out for Derek G. Now let's talk about the GC classification and what we face in the coming days because it's a doozy. Stage five tomorrow, well, it's the second of two sprint days in this 2024 Criterium du Dauphiné. Then we have three summit finishes in a row. If we're looking at the GC on the day, well, it's Remco Evenepoel on top, 33 seconds ahead of Primoz Roglic, Matteo Jorgensen one minute and four seconds back, moved up two spots, the same with Primoz Roglic today. Derek G, we saw a complete reshuffling of the GC where we're naming these riders. Derek G dropped three spots in the overall, but setting strong, a great ride by Derek G at one minute and 11 seconds for the Canadian rider of Team Israel Premier Tech. Lascano with his 
extremely well ride today, 1 minute 21. And then we have the riders further down. Nielsen Palace blistering ahead today, 38 spots he jumped up, setting seventh overall right there. The Stars and Stripes, and further down, Rodriguez in 10th overall. Vlasov, that's of course Primoz Roglic's teammate there, 12th overall. Santiago Butrago, 14th from Team Bahrain. And then further down, we have Mikel Lando, which is uh, Remco Evenepoel's teammate and 19th overall, and so on. Oh, and I forgot, Juan Ayuso back there in eighth place at one minute and 27 seconds back. Now looking ahead, there are some serious days on the horizon. Remco Evenepoel will be put to the test. Maybe not tomorrow. His Sudal Quick Step team will be all around him, all around the Belgian as he races on the flats, and they're good at that. Then as we turn our attention to the three summit finishes that in this Criterium du Dauphiné, that's where the test will come for Remco. He has his mountain domestiques, Elon Van Wilder and Mikel Landa, but so does Primoz Roglic and the other riders out there like Mateo Jorgensen with his American companion, Sepp Kuss. Roglic has Vlasov. He also has Jai Hindley, a former Giro d'Italia winner like Primoz Roglic. So a lot is to play for. But right now, today, we're celebrating the return of Remco Evenepoel in the 2024 Criterium du Dauphiné.